Hey everybody, well, did you miss me for a couple of days? I'm back now. I just took a little bit of time off. I kind of wanted to recharge a little bit, but also I had a bunch of stuff I had to do yesterday. You know what I did is I upgraded my storage unit. I've got a, an off-site storage unit and I needed to, I needed to get a bigger one. So I guess that means I'm getting it to be like more of a pro level hoarder now. <laughs> Because the little one wasn't quite big enough, so I spent the day moving stuff into this bigger unit. And you know, really, having a storage unit, really what that means is I'm able to clear out all the excess junk in my house. Hopefully I'll get to the point where there's just nothing left in my house. But it clears out all this stuff and it puts it in there to defer the ultimate decision of what happens to that stuff to a later date. Even as I was moving the stuff that I had in the old unit, I was looking at it and thinking, why am I even keeping this at all? I should be getting rid of it. But then I was busy moving and I thought, I don't have time to make that decision right now. So I put it all <laughs> into the bigger storage unit. But I got a project I wanna work on this week and it's a specific project for a need that I have. What happens is that my computer, I have that stand up computer, I almost always stand up, but it lowers too. And why it uses that computer for, because it's, it's really high speed. And so he uses it for playing online D&D &D with his friends. And so when he uses it, when he's the DM, he has to bring in a separate table from the living room, hauls that thing in there and sets it down so that he has room for all of his materials. And it's just, it's a real pain to have to move that back and forth all of the time. So I thought, you know what I'll do? I'll make him a folding table so that it just stores neatly away. And so what my idea was to make, when I was a kid, we used to call these TV trays. I don't know if they're still called that anymore, but it's kind of, it's a real basic design. The thing just all folds up and, you know, store it wherever you like. It's just a simple folding table. I think this is kind of a classic design. I'm just kind of trying to work out, you know, where the pivot points are on it. I'm gonna hold it all together with dowels. And then I haven't exactly figured out a locking mechanism when it's in the upright position. Let me show you that. Even just maybe like a dowel right here, you know, that just you came down to stop that would probably work out. I don't know. I'll probably just play around with it once I get this assembled and see what I can come up with. But it should be pretty simple. I kind of want to make this as a prototype to begin with. So I'm going to use three quarter inch plywood for the top. And then I've just got some one by two boards I should be able to scrounge up. And I'm pretty sure... I have some dowels that I can also use. There is nothing that makes me happier than discover, well actually, actually there's a lot of things that make me happier than this. <laughs> but this is pretty, this makes me pretty happy to discover that all of the materials I need for a project I already have right here in my shop. So I don't have to make a special trip to the home center and go through all that nonsense or lumber yard or anywhere. I don't have to do nothing except build. This is one of those rare projects where I should be able to just cut all the pieces at once at the beginning of the project. The biggest problem with this, these are kind of cheap furring strips really is what these are, is that they're almost always really warped. And so they're, <laughs> They're pretty curvy, so you gotta, you gotta look at them and try to figure out where are the best sections you can use. So, you know, if you really need two boards for a project, you might actually need three because you're gonna have to, you know, use different parts of it. So like right here, I've got a kind of a split right there and that's just gonna cause nothing but problems. I think I could actually just break this. And so I should be able to use a chunk here and then probably down here. Right about here is where it really starts to go wonky. Let's see how it works out. I have quite a few holes to drill in this project and it's gonna be really important that they're all square and that, well not, 
not square holes, <laughs> but square to the board. Also, they need, well, they need to be straight. They need to go straight through the board without going at weird angles. And they also have to be lined up in the same position on the board so that they pivot correctly. And so really the best way to do that is to use my drill press. The drill press with its fence lets me keep everything nice and square. And with my stop block set up here, I can make sure that each of my holes is bored in the exact same spot on adjoining boards. The first holes I want to make are on these two cleats. And I'm going to put four holes in each one that screws will go through to attach to the top of the table from the underside, but I don't want to have to use screws that are this long. So what I'll do is first drill a hole for the screw and then I'll counter bore these. What I've done here is I've got a scrap piece of plywood so that I can drill all the way through and it doesn't damage my drill press table that much. And I've set up this sliding stop block here so that I can cut the two end holes, then I'll adjust it and cut the two inner holes. Now to make the counter bore, I'm gonna install this Forstner bit. And what I want to do is set this so that the drill bit stops at about halfway through the board. So I've got this little mechanism here that I can adjust like that. And then it'll stop at the same position. And by the way, in case you're wondering, this is the difference between a counter bore and a counter sink. You use a counter sink bit which is just kind of like got this beveled tip on it that makes this little bit of a kind of a cone shape there. That's for making the head of the screw kind of flush with the top of the board. A counter bore is usually used when you have a wide board that you need to go through and you can so it'll go like that, rather than having to get an extra long screw. Now I need to drill a larger three quarter inch hole that's gonna go all the way through this one and this board. And those need to also, of course, match up. So I've set up a stop block here that's three quarters of an inch away from the end of the board. So I'll just set it in here and drill it on through. And I've got a backer board of plywood down here. Using a backer board not only protects my drill press table, but it prevents the back side from blowing out and splintering as it goes all the way through. All right, now those two holes will line up perfectly. All four of the legs are gonna require that exact same hole on one end of each of those. So I can do that now without having to adjust anything. And that's all the holes I need to make on the two long legs. These two inside legs are a little bit shorter and they're gonna require a second and a third hole. The middle one is gonna be longer than my fence, so I can't set up a stop block, but what I can do is mark it on one of these boards and then I'll just drill a hole while both of them are held together. I don't need to adjust the fence. It's already set up for the halfway point on the width. So what I can do is just line up my mark here. There, okay. Now, what I wanna do is clamp these in place so that they don't slip out of position. I can use my stop block on this lower hole. Since I'm cutting both at the same time, I'll go ahead and clamp these down too. I'm gonna cut all of the dowels down to their final lengths. I wanna make the ends of all of these boards rounded, so I'm just using a cap that's almost the same width as the board. I wish I could find one that was exactly an inch and a half, but this is close enough. I think if I was gonna make, you know, a bunch of these tables, 
I would want to rig up some sort of a template where I could repeat this over and over again a lot easier. I could cut these curves on my bandsaw and then smooth them up on my disc sander, but you know, they're so small, I might as well just save a step and do the whole procedure on my disc sander. I really want to give these a good sanding before I start to assemble it. Those furring strips are pretty rough. And as I was sanding these, I got to thinking about the assembly procedure. And I, I think I just want to double check my plans and kind of give this a little bit more thought before I assemble it. So I'll leave this video off here and we'll pick it up tomorrow with the assembly. It should go pretty quickly. I'll see you then. Okay, I'm here with Wyatt and we just want to put on a quick little skit for you. This is a skit originally appeared in Cyanide and Happiness many years ago. I am a customer at an Audi repair shop. Hello, kind sir. I understand you're the proprietor of this Audi repair shop. I just so happen to have an Audi that is in a state of disrepair. And I understand that you offer a special discount. Yes, we do. It is only for people with outwards belly buttons. Are, are you a ghost or something? I am indeed. Oh, so, well, I guess I don't get the discount then? Well, you out and out about an Audi, buddy. Only Audis get the out of body, Audi, auto body, Audi, audit. <laughs> there we go!